We are just going to wait a minute for the other participants. If they are not going to come, I'm just going to explain the topic that we are going to see for today. So we are going to, uh, to wait like a minute and then we are going to start with the session for today because we are going to talk about like and dislikes. We are going to see something. Oh my God, what is this? Okay, let me see. Okay. We have two topics that we are going to develop. The first one is likes and dislikes. And we are going to see some phrases that we can use to um, talk about the things that we like and the things that we don't like. Because um, in English, we have a lot of words that we can use to express as something like this. And then we are going to talk about questions and in that case, it is not like we are going to use um, WH questions or the verb to be. We are just going to use do and does. That is another way that we can um, make questions. So we are going to see that structure in this session. So for the first part, we have the topic likes and dislikes. And we have the objective and it says that in this lesson, participants will listen to a conversation expressing likes and dislikes. So in that case, when we are talking about this one, it's talking about the things that we want to um, express. In our daily life, it's normal that we have things that we don't like or are like. Um, that we don't stand. So in that case, we are just talking about this kind of situation in which we are going to express the things that we like and the things that we don't like, uh, talking about different um, like categories in which we are going to express um, if we maybe love, like, kind of like, don't like, hate, or have never thrived. In that case, it's just an example in which we are going to see some categories in which we can express that kind of emotions. Um, because uh, it is not like, we have kind of activities that we really like and we have other activities that we don't, like and that's normal because we have this kind of um, freedom to decide the things that we like and the things that we don't like. But in this case, first we are going to write some um, phrases that we can use when we are talking about the things that we like and don't like. In this case, the phrases are for um, making a kind of how can we say it? Um, to... Vamos a utilizar estas expresiones para hacerlo más interesante a la, a la hora de expresar las cosas que nos gustan y las cosas que no nos gustan. It's not like I am just going to use I like, I dislike, or I love, I hate. There are a lot of words that we can use to express these uh, situations. So in that case, um, we are going to um, write some expressions that are positive, or in this case, is for the things that we like. And there are the negative ones that are for the things I don't like or the things that I dislike. So in that case, I'm going to write the word sentence or phrase in English. And also I'm going to write the translation or the interpretation of that sentence into Spanish. So in that case, it says that this, this kind of sentences or phrases are followed by a noun or a noun phrase or the ing form of any verb. So in that case, I'm going to write or present 
the uh, sentences or the phrases that we are going to use. Or maybe we can um, add to our vocabulary. Or the first things, and I am not reading the sentence that I have for you today, that is the only way to do great work is to look what you do. So I know that, it, it, and in this phrase is very accurate for this topic because in this case, we are talking about to love what we are doing in our daily life. So in that case, if we don't like our job, we are going to uh, be very stressed with that work and we are not going to be motivated to go to work. So the only way to do a great work and to enjoy it is loving what we are doing. Maybe it is not our dream job, but we need to do something uh, to find or um, yes, to find a good thing to do in our job. So now it's time to write the expressions that we can use to talk about the things that we like and the things that we don't like. So we are going to have something like this, and I'm going to write the expression for the things that we like or the positive expressions and the Spanish translation and interpretation. So we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Okay, like this. So the first thing is I'm going to write it into English, but I am going to write here expressions or expressing likes and dislikes. So we are going to begin it. In this case, we are going to write like this because this one is the positive and this one is the negative or the things I don't like. For the first one, I have um, on, off, but in this case, it is the Spanish meaning. So I'm not going to write it like that. I'm fond of, then I have, I am keen on. Then I fancy, I love, I'm really into, then it's right up my street. I live for, We have is my thing. I'm crazy about. And I need one more. I don't know if I can just hmm, like this, I think. Yeah. And I did I B. So in this case is a Spanish. Because we are going to write the meaning or the interpretation for that um, phrase. Remember that maybe we have or we are um, familiar with this kind of phrases, but in this case, we're just going to give an interpretation. Remember that in English, we have a lot of uh, phrases or words that can function or has different meanings depending on the situation, right? Depending on the context of the phrase that we are using. So in this case, it is just an interpretation for that kind of phrases. In the first one, I'm fond of, we can translate it as soy fan de. But in some cases, we can find another uh, expression that we can use. I can on, and it says, estoy interesado. Okay. 
Then I fancy, me gusta. Or we can say, me apetece. I love, amo. Or we can say, me encanta. Then we have, I am really into. Me gusta mucho o estoy muy interesado. Then we have it's up right in the street. And in this one, we can say is justo lo que necesito. Or we can say es justo lo que me interesa. Then I live for, vivir por, or we can say, esperar por. Then it's my thing, es lo mío. I'm crazy about, me encanta. Or we can say, me vuelve loco. And we have idea that it mean, means me encanta. Again, remember that these kind of phrases have different uh, usage, and in some cases we can um, have the same uh, meaning in Spanish, but it, you can use all of them in in your uh, sentences in your in your conversation, but some of them has the same meaning and that's not a big deal. So that's why we have this kind of, um, we have a lot of words that we can use to express the same thing. Then we have um, now the negative ones or the things that we don't like. We are going to see some uh, words or phrases that we can use to express things that we don't like. We have nine, but I need 10 of them. So we have here the negative and the Spanish. And we have I dislike, that is the most common. I dislike. Then we have I'm not a huge fan of. Huge and off. Then I have isn't my cup of tea. Isn't my cup of tea. Then we have it doesn't flow my boat. My boat. And then we have, I don't really care for. Then I'm not into. I can stand. And I load. So I don't need the last one. So in this case, I dislike. That is the most common phrase that we can use when we don't like something. In Spanish, it's mean, no me gusta. But in some cases, we can um, like translate it in like something that I maybe no me gusta, no me agrada, o estoy en desacuerdo, like I'm um, disagree or something like that. 
So, I'm not a huge fan of, no soy un gran fan o, admi o admirador de. Then, it's in my cup of tea. No es de mi agrado. Then, it doesn't flow my boat. No lo disfruto o no me gusta. I don't really care for. Realmente no me interesa. O oh, no me importa. I'm not into. No me interesa, no me gusta. They, I can stand, no lo soporto. And also we can use this one. I need to change that one or the last. Here, in this case, we are going to use I can't. In this case, we can use the same meaning. No lo soporto. And the last one is odiar o abominar. So in this case, we have this kind of um, phrases or uh, words that we can use to um, express the things that we like or we don't like. Uh, so in this case, it's not like we need to, to uh, use just this kind of sentences. So in this case, it's to make it more interesting when we are talking about the things that we like and the things that we don't like. Uh, we can say that um, cuando utilizamos este tipo de frases o eh, oraciones es para agregarle más um, más color, verdad, más interés a lo que estamos diciendo y para que las personas eh, no se aburran a la hora de escucharnos. Remember that when we are talking with someone we tend to repeat some uh, phrases or words. And in that case, it is not like uh, the people really pay attention to us. So in this case, if we are going to use this kind of sentences or this kind of uh, phrases, it will be really good to hear something new. So in that case, if you add this kind of phrases to your vocabulary, it will be very, very good because you can change the structure of the words that you are using and also you are going to entertain the listener of the things that you are saying. And also it is not like we are going to use something really basic all the time. You need to improve the way you are expressing your idea. So in that case, you need to add this kind of sentence to your, um, to your conversations to make it more interesting. So those are some words that we can use. Um, we know that there are a lot of uh, phrases that we can use to express the things that we don't like and the things that we like. But in this case, I just have like 10 of them for this uh, session. So it is not like we have all the information here. You can find a lot of words uh, when you are searching on the internet or within books because English has this kind of words in which we are not like very, uh, don't find it like familiar, but they use a lot. Uh, En inglés tenemos este tipo de frases que son 
eh, que se utiliza para diferentes tipos de situaciones. Que en, en Estados Unidos, ¿verdad? Más que todo, se utiliza mucho este tipo de, de oraciones. Like, it's not my cup of tea. O sea, no estamos diciendo que no es mi tipo de té o no es mi taza de té, sino que se refiere a una situación que no nos gusta o que no disfrutamos. So in that case, that um, the English is full of that kind of words or sentence. Uh, and we need to know what is the meaning of those. So in that case, it's good to see this kind of uh, structures of this kind of old phrases to help uh, us to improve the way we are talking. So then we have like a table in which we are going to see the um, the categories of things that we can use to create conversations. So we have a question and it is, what do you like? So in that case, when we are meeting people, we need to ask this kind of question because it is something normal to ask the things that people like and don't like to create a conversation and also to uh, have more information about people. So in that case, we have the question and then we are going to um, have some expressions to talk about um, the things that we like and the things that we don't like and we are going to write a percentage or a number that represents the category. Then I will write the categories that you can use to um, talk about with people or the categories that you can use to find more information about the things that people like and don't like. But in this case, we have an example and let's move to this one. So for this one, we have the question, what do you like? That is the question and we have likes and these likes that are the things that we are learning right now. And we have for the positive, and in this case, we are going to use another ones that are kind of easy to understand. For the positive, the, the, the answer that we are going to give in this case is yes, I love, and in this case is 100%. That is something that we really, really like. Then another one, yes, I really like. Seventy-five percent. We like that, but it's kind of hmm, we can live without it. Then yes, I like. Ah, in this case, no. This is ninety percent. The last, the next one is seventy-five. Yes, I like. And we have 75%. And then, yes, I can, I kind of like. And it is 16, 16%. So, En este caso, ¿verdad? Para nuestras respuestas es más que todo para saber, ¿verdad? Cuando en realidad nos gusta mucho algo, podemos utilizar el yes, I love. Sí, me gusta, me encanta, lo amo. Then, yes, I really like, es 90%, es como un poquito menos, pero nos sigue gustando mucho. Sí, en realidad me gusta. Then, yes, I like, es como, sí, me gusta, pero no es como algo que me vuelva loco. Then, yes, I can of like. Sí, me gusta un poco, pero no demasiado, pero no me disgusta. Then, we have negatives. Let me take this out because it is not working like this. Okay. Then, we have negative answers. And for the negatives, we are down or below the 16%. 
And we have, no, I don't really like. Or really dislike, I really dislike. And we're going to use 14%. Then, no, I don't like or dislike very much. I don't like. In this case, we're going to use, I don't like it very much. And we have here, that is 13%. Then, no, I don't dislike. That is 10%. Mean. Okay. And the last one, no, I hate. That means that you don't really like that thing and you can stand it. Zero percent. So that, those are the answers that we can give to the, the question, what do you like? And then the category of things that we are going to um, think about. Tenemos este tipo de respuestas a la hora de que nos hagan la pregunta que nos gusta y nos pongan una serie de opciones. En este caso, vamos a ver cuáles son las categorías que podemos utilizar a la hora de utilizar esta información. So, we have free time activities in this case. Free time activities, one, two, three, four, five, six. Six and we have twenty five. Twenty. In this case, we are going to add twenty, and we have here. This is the example of the things that we can add to the conversation. We have free time activities. And we have here, love. We have like. We have kind of like. Then we have don't like. Eight, and I think I cannot add the last one. Let me see if I can do it, but I think I'm not. Let me see, let me see. In this case, I need to add something. But in this case, it is not available to add the last one. So in this case, in the last um, space, we have have never tried. Tenemos amar, gustar, gustar más o menos, no gustar, odiar, y en la última, Nunca lo he probado. So in that case, we have that option too. So in the first free time activity that we can ask to people if they like that kind of activities is watching TV. So in that case, we can ask about TV programs. We can ask about movies. We can ask about music. A sports and all of the things, but something that has to be with watching TV. Then we can talk about a swimming. If, the, if people like to swim, love, like, kind of like, don't like, hate, or have never tried. Then singing. 
maybe we can ask about uh, the act of singing and what kind of music they like to sing, if they like, if they don't like, we are not going to ask about the things that they, they like to sing. Then boxing, reading, studying, walking, if they if if people like to walk, what kind of things they like to do when they are doing that activity? For example, they like to see the flowers, they like to take pictures, they like to draw, maybe they like to go buy something. We can ask a lot of things when we know what kind of activity people like to do. Then jogging. Then we have listening to music. Driving a car. Shopping. Painting. Traveling, chatting with your friends, playing video games, I will move this one because I need more space for the first one. For this, okay. Playing video games, cooking, eating, building a bike. going to the cinema, then we have another one that is doing exercise, playing chess, Doing sports. And the last one, drawing. So, in this case, we have a lot of categories in which we can ask um, that questions, like we are going to use the category to talk about with people. So, in that case, we are going to say, Do you like, do you like boxing? Do you hate reading? Do you like traveling? And in that kind of questions, we are going to find information about people. That kind of information that we want to learn about them. So we have the examples of questions that we can ask when we are meeting new people. So we have, do you like boxing? Then we have the next one. Do you hate reading? And the last one, do you like traveling? So in that case, we're going to use this kind of questions like, do you hate reading? And people say maybe yes. I hate reading and we can ask why. And then we can create that conversation. I don't like reading because I, I find that it's kind of boring or maybe I cannot find a book that is interesting enough. And then you can um, talk about your favorite book. 
oh, I have a favorite book that is, uh, that talk about um, maybe an assassination or is a book that is talking about a monster or it's a book that is talking about dragons and it is very interesting and easy to read and you can find a lot of things. We can uh, talk about the things that we need to ask. And that is the thing about uh, this topic. It's kind of um, short and easy to understand because in this case, it's talking about this, the things that we like and the things that we don't like. It will be interesting to um, perform an activity with that topic. The situation is not good right now because there are not all the participants in the session. So we are going to omit that part for another day. So in that case, that is the complete information about like and dislike that we have. And now we are going to see the other topic that is um, that we are going to talk about a structure to create questions. So we have topic number two, and we are going to talk about question we do and thus. And it says by the end of this lesson, participants will be able to ask questions in simple present using do or does along with WH words. So um, is uh, interesting because in this case, we are going to focus on the questions with a do and a does. We were um, learning about the questions with WH words and with the verb to be. But in this case, we're just going to uh, learn information about questions with do and a does. So um, there are many questions that you can make using do and does. And the most common way to make question with do and does is by using the word do or does depending on the subject that we are using at the beginning of the sentence followed by a pronoun or in a verb. So we're going to mark this one as the beginning of this explanation. And it says the most common way to make question with do and does is by using the word do or does at the beginning of the sentence. Followed by a pronoun and a verb. So we have the example of the most common way to create this kind of question. And we have the example, do you know Jason Bourne? Jason. One. And that's a simple question that we can make. And we have the other one that is with thus. Does she know how to play the guitar? Does she know how to play? Okay. So in that case, we have this kind of easy way to create uh, questions. And it is not complicated to understand the uses of do or does. Um, para el tema 2, estamos hablando, ¿verdad?, de lo que es el uso del do y del das, que obviamente lo utilizamos en el presente eh, para crear este tipo de preguntas. Son preguntas simples que no necesitan de mucha información. Pero en el caso de do or does, también tenemos preguntas abiertas. It is not like we are just going to create closed questions. In this case, we are going to use do or does to make open questions. 
And we have the examples. And in this case, we are going to use the WH words. And we have the first example. Where do you live? And in the second one, what do you want to know? So in that case, those are open question in which people are going to give more information about the things you are, you are asking. So we're going to see all the types of questions that we can make with do and does. We are going to see the structure and some examples. So let's begin. Close questions with do and does in the structure. We are going to begin with the close ones. So it says that uh, questions with do and thus are quite easy to make since the simple present is one of the most common tense in English. Remember, when we are learning English, the one or the most important tense that we're going to use to make questions and to talk about with people is the present simple. So in this case, it is the one that we use the most. So in that case, it is not complicated to create this kind, this kind of questions uh, using the present simple. So we are going to create the uh, structure um, in which we are going to use the do or does. We are going to have do or does plus the pronoun plus verb and plus complement. So we are going to divide it like this. So let's see. We have the table one, two, three. One, two, three. Eight. And we have eight here. So we have the first thing that we are going to use for these questions, do, does. Then we have the pronoun, that is our subject. And then we have the verb plus the complement. And the question mark. So we're going to write first the pronouns I, you, it, 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 and they. Now we are going to write the correct uh, word if it is do or it is does. Here, here, us, us, and Now we have the verb and the complement. For example, do I work here? Do you run every day? Does he have a car? Does she play soccer? Does it work? Have to leave. How 
So I don't know if in this exact moment you are listening to me because I am not listening myself because it's raining so hard. So I don't know if you are listening anything uh, because I just hear the sound of the rain and I don't know. So it is almost time, so I need to continue with the topic. Um, so in this case, um, it's kind of easy to create these kind of sentences because in that case, you just need uh, four elements. For example, you just need the do or does, the pronoun that is your subject, and then you need the verb, the complement, and the question mark. That's it. You don't need anything else. And in this case, when you are using do or does, it is a closed question. In that case, you are just going to answer yes or no. You are not going to add anything else to the information that you are giving. So, those questions can be answered by saying yes or no. And we have the, the example. So, you have to play soccer. And in that case, you are going to answer, yes, I do. Así como hacemos con el verbo to be, a la hora de responder, eh, no simplemente vamos a poner yes. No simplemente vamos a poner no. In that case, we need to answer with the word that we are using for the question. Yes, I do. No, I don't. Like in the verb to be. Yes, I am. No. I am not. So remember that you have to, uh, to add that information for your answer. Now we are going to use the open question. Remember that we have the WH words. We are just going to add the WH words to remember the information. So those are the WH words that we are going to use um, for this kind of question that are the open question in which we are going to give more information about uh, the answer that people is um, trying to gain for us. So we have this kind of questions. Let's see. And we have the first one where where do you live? What do you do? What do you like to do? What music do you like? And we bring information from the topic, the like and dislike, for these kind of questions too. What shows do you like? So, 
in this case, you can see that we can create questions to ask about like and dislike. We have that topic at the beginning and now we can have another question that we can ask to find the things that people like and don't like. And that we have three, three questions. What do you like to do? ¿Qué te gusta hacer? And in that case, we are going to add information about the activities that we like to do. Then, what music do you like? In that case, it is asking about the kind of music that we uh, enjoy, that we prefer. And the number three, what shows do you like? That is talking about watching TV. Then we have that kind of question in which you are going to add all the information that you want. So, we have two categories for this kind of questions. We have two categories of questions. We have questions with, with do and does for personal information. We have And we have number two, that is the second category that we have, that is questions we do and does. A school and learning. So for this one, that is personal information. We are going to write some question that you can ask to um, have more information about someone. We have, where do you live? Then you have, where does she live? Then we have, how many brothers do you have? Then we have, how many brothers does he have? Another question, how many sisters do you have? Do you have any dogs? Do you have any cats? So these kind of questions are questions for personal information. Now for a school and learning, we have these ones. We have this, where do you study? Where does she study? What do you study? How many languages do you know? What subject do you like the most? So those are two categories that we have. One is personal information. The second one is school and learning. But also we have questions for entertainment. 
that kind of question that it is not like we are going to find something personal about someone. It is just for fun. So in that case, we have entertainment. And we have the following questions. What do you like to watch? What music do you like? Do you watch anime? Do you watch independent films? Does your girlfriend like horror movies? What would your children like to watch? What man fans do you boyfriend like? The last one. Does your girlfriend know how to dance? So in that case, we have different categories of um, do and ask question. And we can ask uh, a lot of things using that information. So in that case, we have three categories. But the, the two important ones are the personal uh, questions or for the personal information, the school and career, school and learning. And also we have for entertainment, but in that case, it's just when you are um, making new friends. So it's time to end the session. Thank you for your time. Let's see each other tomorrow. Have a really good night and we are going to see each other for the next session that is tomorrow. So goodbye everyone. Bye teacher. Bye-bye. See you tomorrow. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Good night. Good night. Thank you for that. See you tomorrow.